Hey there. How you doing? Nice to see you here again. Listen, the audio control in Windows is pretty basic and really isn't very useful if you have multiple audio sources, especially if you want to mix them. So if you, like me, want a better solution, ooh, oh my God, free and easy hardware agnostic piece of software for you. Let's take a look at what this piece of software is. SteelSeries Sonar. Nice and easy, you probably saw it in the title already. To get it, you can go to steelseries.com forward slash gg forward slash sonar, click the download button, install it, just like any other piece of software. The other way is if you are part of my Discord server, you can actually go into the software and find it here. You click the link, it'll take you to it, download straight away, done. Nice and easy. You can also see in this that I have listed a bunch of other software that I already use and that list keeps getting added to. Now, let's go into Sonar itself so I can show you how to use it. Once you've installed SteelSeries GG software, you've created your account and logged in, go to settings, go to general, and here you can see Sonar, turn it on. You can see I'm enrolled in the beta options here as well. You don't have to do that if you're not necessarily interested in potentially clunky software, but I turn it on because I like to have these updates and try these new things out and provide feedback. Once Sonar is turned on, in the left menu over here, you will see the Sonar option. Let's click that Sonar option and it takes you to the primary page, which is the mixer. This is where it gets super simple and straightforward. And this is why I love this piece of software. It's free, it's hardware agnostic, and it's really easy. No complexity whatsoever. SteelSeries has done an excellent job taking the complexity out of something that's relatively difficult for somebody like myself to improve the audio quality. You've got your master volume, so the master gain level. You've got the game audio, chat audio, media audio, and then your microphone. You can actually see my microphone is moving as I talk because this microphone is fed through SteelSeries. If we change the master gain, you can see all of the sources, the output sources, move. So I will put my gain back down here. From here, in the game audio, you can either click on the settings icon right here and bring up this little menu, or you can click on the output source itself. You can change the source right here. I'm going to play it through my monitor speakers. So we'll select that. Then you can change the level. So 80% is what I set it at so that if I turn it all the way up, it never clips the audio totally because it's only playing 80% of the capacity of volume. You change the gain up or down as I just showed you, and you can do that on an individual level and the master will change relative. Let's say you use some sort of in-ear headphone, an AirPod or another Bluetooth headset of some sort. You can take chat audio, click on the source, playback, and then select your connected Bluetooth headset so that it sends those sources to different places. Then you go to media. This is an interesting one. If you click the source, you can also see this added button, app to device routing. If I click that and then show you the settings, you can see here that now I can go down to these apps. I click down, I have output device and I have input device. You can change them individually. Works great. The microphone, you can see how it works here. All of the sources are represented the same way. You get the bar moving to represent audio or volume, and you can move your gain levels. Once you play with it for like five minutes, you'll understand how it works. So how do you refine each of these sources? Up here, you can see in this menu, you've got gain, chat, media, and microphone. These are the EQs. Again, SteelSeries has made this really easy for you to use. So you have the configuration tab when you go into each profile. Look at all these options, right? So you've got all these options for different games that they've already built configs for. This is the EQ for Modern Warfare 2. If I put it on Warzone, look at the change in the EQ. I'm not going to mess with this. I'm not good enough at audio to be able to improve the audio itself without messing something up. What I do here is then I would say, what game am I playing? Do I need directionality? Really easy. They've made this simple. Scroll down to spatial audio. Turn it on. This is the tuning. I can see all the directions that the audio is going to appear 
like it's coming from. Even if the game has directionality built in, your headphones, if they're not 7.1, aren't going to be able to provide you perfect directionality. So the software tries to improve that by creating the illusion of directionality. The QC35 II is what I use. And I do that because the noise cancellation, they make great editing headphones, they're comfortable and really just great sound quality. I also, as a backup, have a pair of SteelSeries Arctis 1s. A very different type of headset, but still very good for the price. If I turn these headphones on, and now I go back to the mixer, you can see that the output has changed. And so now all that audio is going to go through my headphones. What do I want in Warzer? Immersion or directionality? So performance, as it says here, is going to improve directionality and localization. So I'm going to swing it about to about minus 10. Distance, this is going to really depend on your headphones and your ears. Once you play with it for a little while, mess with a slider, really easy. You can just add gain and it'll boost your gaming volumes. You can keep smart volume if we turn this on. You can change the level. If something is louder in a game, it will bring it down. If something is quieter, it will try to boost it to keep it within that range. That's how it works. Super easy. Let's move over to chat. So the chat tab. Now, instead of having gaming configuration for gaming audio with a gaming EQ, you've got one built for other people's voices. So I like mine on clarity. I've always had it on clarity. I like to remove a lot of bass from people's voices while I'm playing games. Gunshots, footsteps, ambient noises. I'd rather hear those than a person's voice in completeness. So I pull a little bit of the lower frequencies and some of the mids, and then the upper mids and highs, I sort of boost those. It makes a person's voice stand out to me. Your ears will be different, and you can mess with this EQ as you want, and that's the perfect thing to do. What happens with SteelSeries is it brings in that chat audio through, say, Discord or WhatsApp or whatever somebody's chat audio is coming through. It analyzes it, and then you manually set the background reduction, the impact reduction. Background will reduce fan noises or ambient noises and try to isolate the voice. Impact will get rid of clicks, bangs, things that are impact noises. The noise gate, if you know how a noise gate works, this is a silly explanation for you because you're much smarter than I am. As far as I understand a noise gate, at a certain volume threshold, it opens, which means that anything under that volume threshold doesn't come through, which is a really nice tool. However, if you overdo it, you can cut voices off. So I typically used to leave mine quite low. With a recent update, the Clearcast AI noise cancellation software has actually been included, and now I just leave that on. I don't have to manually do anything. It analyzes each person, it takes all the information that comes through, and it seemed to do a really good job of isolating other people's voices for me. And I talk to different people all the time on Discord, same as most of you. So that would be really beneficial. Let's move to media. Same thing, right? Play with this and figure out what you like. You just set it and forget it effectively. If you want spatial audio, you can turn that on. We've already covered that, so that's easy to understand. Gain smart volume. Just play with that and figure out what sort of thing you like, depending on whether it's music source, movie source, just YouTube videos. Doesn't really matter. Let's go over to the microphone. This is your microphone. The input source not an output source under the configuration again there are a bunch of presets you can see i've got a couple of custom ones in here for a different microphone which currently is not plugged in i'm currently using the fifa microphone i basically just managed the eq and pulled a bunch of the noise out that was really easy i can actually pull all of that out because that's 62 hertz i'm not really interested in listening to that anything under 100 or so really isn't necessary my voice is not deep enough to get down to that range to be losing anything this microphone kind of boosts the lows and mids already that's what it's trying to capture it's a podcast microphone i can basically leave this as is for the broadcast low pitch and then just boost the highs improve the quality of the microphone then you get a relatively clear sound I think this sounds very good. For a microphone that cost 70 bucks, I think I paid for it, maybe 60. It sounds very similar to a Shure SM7B, and it's a fraction of the cost. I haven't actually spent time EQing this. I really just broadcast low pitch, pull out the low stuff, leave these mids, click record, listen to my voice a couple of times by pressing play. So if you record, you can record a section and then basically press stop 
and then play it back. Recorder section, and then basically press stop. Recorder plays through your headphones, and then basically press. Stop. I probably spent ten minutes, maybe. I'm not very good at audio. There's probably some of you listening who will provide me tips in the comments and I will go back and check them and try them in this software because there's going to be so many of you that know so much more about audio than I do who will also be able to get more out of this tool than I can. In Clearcast with the AI noise cancellation, currently have mine at 33. I can always turn the microphone gain up physically on the microphone rather than in the software to allow my voice volume to increase. I don't really like to do that because this room isn't audio treated. You can pick up vibrations, echoes, and they're a lot harder to get out without impacting my voice. So if it's quieter and then I boost it in post, my actual volume will sound better because all my microphone is picking up is effectively my voice. This is easy. And as you can see, I've covered all of that really simply. It took what? How long have we been recording? I've been recording for 30 minutes. And that probably took 10, 15 minutes to cover everything in here. And it might take you the same amount of time just to mess with it based on your microphone, your headphones, whatever you're using. Super easy. So there you go. Steel Series Sonar in a nutshell. For what amounts to a free piece of software offered by one of the leading gaming peripheral companies in the world, this is probably without a doubt still the best update I've seen on a piece of software I already had installed. I mean, I recommend it to absolutely everybody. It's free, it's easy, and the fact that it's hardware agnostic goes to show how committed SteelSeries is to improving the gaming experience for everyone. If you want to learn how to supercharge SteelSeries Sonar with the best $79 PC accessory I've ever bought, go here. If you'd like to watch any of my other videos, go here. Thank you for watching. I'm Joss. I'll see you next time.